Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to the Car Station TV and DJ Car. And we are live on the Car Station TV. Uh, this is uh, the Instagram takeover 11. And we're going live with our guest today. He is Scott. Scott is with for us. Oh, hey, hello. Scott, how you doing? I, uh, that was really quick. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we're going live on the Car Station TV, and I'm very happy to have you today. This is the Thank first, you. it's very special, because it's the first Instagram takeover that we're doing 100% in English, okay? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I was worried, because, okay, you, have, you are from UK, you have a British accent, so, okay, am I gonna, am I gonna be able to understand everything that he says? Well, so far, so good, you know? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. No. Okay, so, okay, so I'm disabling the comments right now. Uh, if people have any questions, just send us the question, and we go ahead and check the questions later on, okay? Is that okay with you? Okay. Or, yeah. Because sometimes people are commenting, you know, and then they can really see you, so the idea is that you, people can see you, and they, if they have a question about what we're talking about, then they can send a question and we can share the questions right here with everybody. So, so we are uh, able to see all of the questions and answer all of the questions, okay? Okay, got you. That's good, that's good. Okay, so Scott, <laughs> uh, thank you once again for being in the Car Station TV. And today we have a dual interview. Normally, you are the one who asks the questions, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. today you're going to be ans answering questions and also asking questions. So that's the idea of the Instagram takeover. We have this dual interview in which uh, it's not only an interview, it's a both sides interview, you, you may say. Yeah. Okay. So a lot that's... of people. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. I got so you. <laughs> a lot of people know you and uh, you are a celebrity star. Or in then, uh, but maybe there are some people made for the Latin American countries. They they don't know who you are. So why don't you do a little introduction of yourself? Like who are you? What do you do? Where do you come from? Very short, so people get to know you in most of this part of the world. You know, because we're in different times right now. I know. So yeah, Scott McLean. That's my name. And then um, yeah, I'm an Instagram um, skin influencer. So I talk everything about skin. Uh, I got a podcast show. I got a book, and then uh, I just released a celebrity skin talk as well on Instagram. So yeah, awesome. <laughs> well, in this case, my name is DJ Car. My station <laughs> is the Car Station TV. I'm a DJ producer of electronic music. And I was born in Colombia. I'm right now in the United States. And uh, we're here to have a great time talking about things that we both like, you know. So yeah. why don't we go ahead and start with the first question. This is going to be my first question for you. I could see okay. we had a question for, for you from the audience. But let me go ahead and start with you. And my first question for you, let me go ahead and get my iPad so I can verify uh okay so you mentioned that you uh, had a book and uh yeah. how's that writing process you know and what is it like to write a book i mean i've never written a book. i've written songs but i believe it com is completely different to write a book what is like to write a book and what's gonna be your next book about yeah so literally so it's like a memoir so it's, it was my life so it was quite easy to kind of get on paper i suppose because it's my life um but yeah it was um it took a while but it got there and then um yeah and then i released it everyone the response was great and then i yeah and then but it's kind of like a bit of a drama like so it, it is off market at the moment but my second one is it's, it's on its way. So uh, it is ready to go. It's just I'm kind of waiting for the right moment, you know, Okay. Um, to release it. But it is out there. It is ready to go, basically. But yes. Okay. What is it going to be about? So um, it's about like coming out. It's about bullying. It's about um, turning 30. That was a big thing. 
okay um, uh but it's just like is and and like the podcast shows in there as well so it's like how i launched it you know in everything from that showbiz as well um how the showbiz life is and stuff yeah so <sighs> well, how do you how do you i mean i mean you say it's your uh ideas or your life that you're putting there that you're writing there but yeah how do you start and <laughs> i mean i believe it's 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 a whole book, you know. So it's yeah, like it, it's like I I'm very open and I always like share. Like I'm I you can't never shut me up. That's the problem. See, it's like I have, <laughs> so I'm like I can't stop talking. So I think I um I definitely wanted just my story to be told, and mm -hmm. I thought um this is kind of like the right route to go down. And from the first response, um it was just incredible. So I kind of combined it that one really tweaked it add more in and um yeah so that's the kind of exciting thing but you know starting it you know it was very like 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 therapy i suppose okay just really get you know because it's just like taking you back to a place that okay wasn't... you're releasing everything that you have and exposing that yeah okay okay you know and 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 it's not a great place to go back to sometimes and mm -hmm. um So that's how I, I always think of it as like a therapy. You know, a memoirs, I think, always are, whoever releases them. But, yeah, but uh, I, I am very excited. I think um, I'm nearly at that stage to, like, re-release and um, get it out there for people to read, you know. But, yeah. Yeah, I believe oh, we have wow. that in common uh, because you, you mentioned that you like talking a lot and that's why I believe that's yeah. why you have a podcast. And I be, I'm, I'm mostly the same. I'm a very talkative person. Like uh, I like to express my idea and talk to people. You know, like you know, with this testing thing, like I can't get yeah. boring. Like uh, I mean, I like to talk. You know, to talk to a person, and that's the idea of this uh, Instagram takeover to be able to get to know a lot of pers people like you from other countries, cultures. You know, but we're doing yeah. mostly the same thing. It's very interesting. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and. I just love like creative people and um obviously I know you are as you're very so creative and um uh, I just love having those people around me you know because my head never stops like being creative ever That's good <laughs> that's good yeah. that's very good Yeah yeah it's good Okay <laughs> so why don't you uh, ask my first question Oh yeah absolutely yes I got a prepped um okay yeah so for you because I know you're in the music in industry uh -huh. but like you know when kind of was that moment like to kind of um you know music's going to be a thing how then it went into being more of a career kind okay. of thing um be interesting to know because it, everyone starts different ages and that's yeah. what's crazy about it yeah yeah definitely I believe that people who who dedicate to music uh have it since they, they're really kids you know uh since i was a, a kid a, chi a child i knew that music was important for me you know uh i went to study uh piano i played the piano i also uh some singing and learn about the how you know the 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 difficult part which is the the how do you write music so i kind of have mm -hmm. that that knowledge Uh, and how do you read music also when I was little, very little. So I knew music was important for me. I didn't know how to express myself musically, you know, because it's, it's, it's hard. People think that, oh, music is very easy, but it's not. It's, it's, you, have to have, you have to be big creative. You have to practice, practice, practice to become good at it, you know? And, yeah. and like everything, you, you're not good the first one. You have to practice, practice, do it, redo it. It's a constant thing. Piano, for example, piano, you have to practice a lot in order to be able. I remember I was so good at it that I, I, I played with my teacher. We had a concert together and I was like, I mean, people were surprised. Like, How can this <laughs> little boy play as equally as the teacher? You know, so it's... it's, it's I was uh, impressed with music, and then uh, when I decided, uh, when I moved uh, from uh, Cartagena, I was born in Cartagena. If you ever come to Colombia, Cartagena is the, the most touristical city. It's very right. beautiful. It's very, it has a lot of, um, 
you know, uh, structures from the colony, a Sp Spanish colony. We had a lot of that. And then when I move out the city, I, I, I kind of get to know uh, electronic music, you know? And I was oh, yeah. fascinated with electronic music. I, I wanted to be a DJ, but I didn't know how, you know? And then uh, I started listening, 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 listening a lot. And then when I decided, you know what, I'm going to do my own music. I'm going to make my own music. And then in, that was 20, 2007. I decided, okay, yeah. I started to make my own songs, you know? And then it all started as a, as a hobby, you know, as, as my second career. Sorry, as a, my second career. Uh, mm. And then, as always, you, you are not the best when you start. It's, these are your first songs, you know, so you have to keep trying and trying and trying. And my goal was to be better always and to improve myself. So now, like 10 years later, I can listen to my music and there's a big difference in terms of melodies, in terms of lyrics, in terms of singers. So I'm very happy about that because, you know, I, I'm, I've improved. So I always thought that it was my second job. Like me, I, like I love music, I, I want to do music, but I, and I'm, I became a teacher. So I'm an English teacher a, and I've been teaching in English and I'm teaching Spanish in the United States. So that was like my, you know, I w was doing uh, teaching and then music in my free time. So it was, it was <laughs> something like that. And then, uh, I mean, right now it's, it's very professional. I, be, I, I think that my work has come to a level that I, it's, it's kind of professional. I mean, it is professional. So I'm very happy yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And the good thing is, like, you know, when you said it earlier, you know, when you first start out, like, you just learn, I think, over yes. time, like, you know, what works, what don't work, and... Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes... Like, I, go ahead. Oh, go oh, no, I was going to say, it's just, like, sometimes, like, as well, is, um, you know, like, now it's more of a fashion and it's a, and it's a job. Um, like, you know now how to kind of, like, Get through a couple of things that which before like, at, the, at the start took a very long time which i think you know how many shortcuts they are you know exactly uh, you yeah. know uh, how it has to be done and it has yes. to be done the, yeah. the, the best way possible so, so, yeah. yeah when you start it's like a, you are you don't know where to go like you you basically have to have some influences like people that have been doing this for a long time and then you say you look at them and say, oh i want to be like them i want to do this kind of music i want to do what they're doing so that was also part of my uh, journey and, and i'm very happy about that you know yeah okay absolutely. so let's talk about my second question this will be my second question for you and okay. uh, uh we know that it's i mean you uh, have a, this podcast that is related to the skincare but in my personal case, I suffer from acne all my life. I believe when I was a teenager, I had my face covered with these pimples, you know. And then also my back. I still have, I can't, I can't believe that, I, I mean, years later, I'm still having this problem in my back. Well, I treat my face like I wash it and all that. But baby, I believe the back is like, it's very hard to wash. I don't know. So... I have a lot of these problems. What would you recommend to people that are having the same issues? Because sometimes you, you we may think, oh, it's because you're a teenager and your hormones are like crazy or you don't have a, like a skin routine or I don't know. What, what would be your advice? And also with the beard, you know, men uh, right now is like a fashion. People want to have beards, but how do you, yeah. how do you take care of that? <laughs> Uh, so if, you mean you mean like acne on the back? You mean that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, I, one thing I definitely know for people who's got acne prone skin is um, like fragrance stuff just flares it up. This is from my experience, um, anyway. But like I know, like anything fragrancy, it might smell great. But then he's thinking it's actually doing the job, and then your skin flares up, it breaks out crazy. So. For the back, I knew it, I, I know it of some like body washes that helps it. Um, you know, especially for like the what the brands that does the 
skincare. You know, they they okay. I, it is set brands out there. It does a body wash because acne is just not on the face. And I suffered from it on my back. Like, I think I was like fifteen or like maybe till I was like twenty three. It was on my back. Like it was like always there. And now. Yes. Um, you know, and I think, you know, it's just got to make sure you get the right balance. I think, you know, if you're doing the right thing for your face, you know, maybe just use that cleanser and use it on, the, on your back because obviously it's not reacting badly and, and, and it's working. So, yeah, um, yeah, that is crazy. But it, it is crazy, though. Like, people just think acne in, or any bad skin problems is only in your, like, teenage years. I'm like, nah. Like, no one yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. you know, it's, it could be any age any age and any you always age. suffer from it yeah um and that was why it was important for me to share my story this year um about that but yes and then um what was the second question <laughs> the, the, how do you how, how oh, the beard. You take care yes yeah. so i so these are the things so i i, I do you moisturize do you moisturize mm, not really <laughs> right okay uh, but it's, like, not, it's, so, it's not my my skin is very oily so i really don't need a lot of moisturize you know yeah so you i definitely need to... should still moisturize it doesn't matter what skin type you want moisturizers are over there for everyone that's my tip for you uh -huh. <laughs> but but um for beards though they all have actually got like beard oils especially for beards so these like hydrate it because you're gonna think like beard is even though it's on your face it's still like hair mm -hmm. and you know and you know and a hair has cuticles and all this kind of stuff so it really like needs to like moisturize and a moisturizer doesn't help with that you know you can definitely put it over like normal people but um i i use one by lab series and literally it's like a three in one like you can even shave with it i think as well um but i use it strictly for just hydrating the the, the hair the because hairs. yeah and you know when it gets to that point when it's just like so coarse so dry and you just gotta oh shave okay it. yeah you know it's like it's gotta go and then um and i'm finding that in the minute as well with these masks like but when it's all here like it is making like when it's longer it's making it itch yes. Like, yes like yes. it's like oh get it off <laughs> what's the longest um, that you had it um for what for for the beer yeah yeah i've actually you know what? i've had it quite long especially in um when we were in lockdown uh i it, it grew I, it's a couple of photos on instagram but it grew a bit um but yeah yeah but you know if you have like beard oils i know it's it's quite a good few out there now and yeah definitely got invest in one of them if you've got a beard and you like to grow a beard you know it depends you know well i kind of you know this year i started letting it grow because i i i, I never had really had a beard before okay. i don't know i i, I it's, it's like when you don't have a beard you, you look younger and people i mean ask me how old are you and then i, I don't want to say my age because you're really that old <laughs> so i'm like 43 oh. and and then people say, you're really 43? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm 43. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, how, how, how far, how, um, how long did you go your beard? Like, how, how long was it? Uh, I, I normally use this trimmer, and then they have this number two. So I, I use number two oh, yeah. to trim it. And the longest has been number three, but no, no longer than that. I, as you say, it's, it itches, it itches yeah. and then... Uh, I, I don't think it look good, like it's so long. I don't think it look good. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes I use number one. Sometimes I use number two and then the longest number three, you know, with the, the, the measures, with the streamer. But anyway. Yeah. But a beard oil, beard oil is what Okay, you I think about There's so that. many of them. Yeah. I'll send I, I, you a link I, to them. I wonder if this oil then is going to affect my, my skin, is, is, is it going to suffer from you know acne because it's oil you know i don't know no it'd be good because it's good on the beard so it's like literally just getting in that beard not mm -hmm. the face mm -hmm. not the face mm -hmm. i know it's part of the face but because it's beard there and it's hair mm -hmm. you're treating the hair so obviously 
So they'd be like, the, so our play, they obviously the oil be like the beard oil around here, but then from like here onwards, it's like yeah. completely different. <laughs> okay, Scott, there's a question. Oh, no, we have more questions. Okay, let me show you the, the first question that is going on here. It says, Ivy is asking, Scott, uh, can you give me a shout out? Ivy is asking for a shout out. Oh, hi, Ivy. Hello. Shout out to you. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, uh, another question, Philia is asking, what is your next goal? Uh, well, okay, I'm, I have something in the works, but I'm not allowed to say what it is yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it is, it is on Instagram, and it's kind of following my Celebrity Skin Talk series. So look oh, up for that. Okay, so we have keep uh, paying attention to what is going on. Hey, hey, bro, he's saying, bro. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me go ahead and turn out the questions. Oh, how do I turn this? Oh, okay, there you are. I don't know, that's, that's not too <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so Scott, let's continue with my questions to you now that, oh, it's, it's going to be your second question to me, right? Yeah, now? yeah, yeah, okay. Michael. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we know, so obviously I know, and I've listened to your music, and it's amazing, by the way. Thank um, you. But Obviously, electric electric music is like what you're known for. But what kind of other music genres kind of would you, would you want to dabble in a bit? You know, like well, what other ones would you want to like test your talents to? You know. Well, this year, I mean, yeah, like two years ago, I started with kind of reggaeton. You know what reggaeton is? Yes, I know it. Yeah, I'm a like electronic producer, and then in uh, in electronic music. There's this uh, genre which is kind of a mixture between reggaeton and electronic music. It's called Mumbatun, okay? So Mumbatun is, 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 sounds like reggaeton, but it's not the, the reggaeton, reggaeton that everybody knows. It's reggaeton with electronic. So I, um, I have this song, and then I have the, 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 you know, the track, the instrumental track, and I have the lyrics but I couldn't find the person to sing it, okay? And then, this is the, the song that I'm talking about. It's called Take Me In Your Arms. Take Me In Your okay. Arms. It's a, it's a Spanglish song, actually. It has, starts with, I mean, the final product, it became a Spanish, Spanglish song. So it starts with English, then goes to Spanish, then the, the chorus has English and Spanish. It's, it's crazy. But it, it sounds it sounds uh, very good. I think uh, the singer is a very professional singer. She's uh, uh, M. E. Marie. She worked with Avicii, and uh, I made her through Sound Better. And we have the first song that I worked with her. It's actually right now my number one song on Spotify. It's called Fight for What Is Right. It's, it's, okay. it's my most song safe my most safe song on Spotify, Fight for What is Right. And um, okay. I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that, I, you know, I, I never have did a, a, this kind of more tropical thing, you know, because it's, it's taking the world, right? And, you know, it's taking the world. And I, oh. and I wanted to, to have, like, some kind of uh, pace of what is, you know, like, dumbling and what is it like, what is my sound going to be in this reggaeton thing, which is not 100% reggaeton, but it's like my version of the reggaeton, which I, yeah. I, I was surprised when I, the finished product I listened to it, like, it sounds like Beyonce, <laughs> I don't know. And I, <laughs> yeah, like, is this, it sounds like, I mean, the beginning, the start, like Beyonce, but then it goes to something else. And anyway, I like it. Also, what else? Um, I, I'm very fan of uh, Eurodance, Eurodance music. I mean, uh, in the 2000s, I was crazy with the electronic music that was going on in Europe. Uh, I said, why do I live in Europe? <laughs> because <laughs> it, it was, I mean, the movement of electronic music uh, or Eurodance in, in, in Europe, it was crazy. I was, uh, I mean, this, this, I mean, right now I have this um, playlist which is called Cool Buys by Car. And then there's a lot of uh, artists from Europe that I, from the 90s, from the 2000s, that I am so in love with them. 
I so in love with that music and I wanted to do something like that. I said, I love this genre so much that I want to do something like that. And then I had this song, which is, uh, it's called, I want to feel joy. Again, I just had the instrumental track and I needed a rap singer, you know, rap singing is one thing. Rapping is another thing. And then yeah, I, met, yeah. I met this uh, rapper from California on the uh, on internet and he does this kind of jobs. And I asked him, okay, are you able to write a, a rap and then rap for this song? And he said, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> but again, I mean, I was not 100% satisfied with the product, but I mean, it's, it was like my first song in that genre. And I definitely want to do more, uh, which is like, it reminds you listen to the song it reminds you the 90s the music from the 90s music which is classic love. I, I love yeah. that you know i yeah. love that sound Me too. i love them yeah yeah i love the 90s i'm the a 90s, 90s. i'm a 90s child like i was born in 87 but 90s 90s uh, i grew up in so yes i believe yeah that. what's your favorite artist from the 90s oh so i grew up in so many like when I obviously like people think like the Spice Girls or something, it's like, ah, no, like, yeah, yes, but like, I, mean, know, like, I just, yeah, they were huge. Like, I think, well, yeah, and then, um, but they were like really big, but like, it was like loads of boy bands, girl bands, there was just so many of them, I think. It was just like Backstreet West Boys and okay. Five, like, there's just so many, and then, um, I love, like, I, I love 18s, you know, 18s. Who? They, they were they were singing Ava songs. Let me um, I don't know. I don't know that. One. But um, but yeah, it's so many. Like when people ask me, like, what's your favorite song? Like, lich, I just don't know. I, I don't know. The Eighteens. I just. I, know, I don't know them. <laughs> I don't know they them. they were singing uh, Ava songs like Mamma Mia, like Super Trooper. But in their version, they were very huge in the nineties, in the two thousands, I think. Okay, hmm. I, I I need to check them out. I think <laughs> you should. I mean, yeah. their videos. Oh my god, their videos were 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 very good. They were very famous in Europe, but they were also very famous in the United States. Like kind of mm. with this Britney Spear thing, and they were in that that kind of genre very similar to the Britney Spears music that they did. Yeah, that's what I mean, like, I think it was just so many people coming out, like, that time of year, it's just like, but then these people are, like, a legend, so, like, the, I, I think, like, so many of them are still going on now to this day, you know? Yeah. Uh, from the 90s, which is incredible, and they, like, put this stamp on it, but, um, yeah, but I love, like, cl like classic bit people as well, I love Bette Midler, I love Cher, um, I love um my I share, yeah, I love share. Yeah, like just <laughs> just out there, you know, but we can't pay. <laughs> yeah. Same to that's... sing along to, I guess. That's a good thing. Yeah. Okay, so Scott, let me go with my third question for you. And you are very related in the show business and I saw that you did some modeling too. But mm. it, this is like, you know, like a different word. And then people want to be in the chose business and then modeling and that stuff. But what is something good and something bad that you can tell us about this show business thing or about this modeling career? Yeah, um, I'll go with the bad first. <laughs> Just get that out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but a lot of people, you know, they think uh, they're just going to get like every job they go for. Um, you know, and thinking they're just going to nail it every time. But fortunately, it just never happens in this industry. And, um, yeah, and I always, I've had a lot of turn down jobs. I've had, yeah, just, you know, some bad experiences along the way. But then you learn, I think, um, and then you get a little bit thicker skin and you're thinking, you know, I haven't got that job or, you know, I, like, especially in the modeling side, it's like, oh, I obviously not, I don't look good enough for them, you know, and, um, it's, and it's not the case whatsoever, um, which took me a long time to learn because obviously you just think, you know, it, it must be something wrong with me, but obviously the client has an idea in the head and, and sometimes you might not fit that idea, you know, which 
a lot of actors and actresses get it as well. So it's just not just the modeling world. Yeah. Um, but that was, you know, it's very hard, especially starting out. But like the modeling thing now is very, it just comes quite organically. Like I don't go out hunting for it anymore. You know, I've got an agent for that. Um, but yeah, yeah. So they obviously they see me and stuff like that. But then I'm also, I am also dabbling in like TV extra work as well. So that's like a new thing. I think I, I've signed up for this year. Okay. Um, so that's the kind of like so that's the kind of a bad one. But the good thing is though, you know, that um, you know, we've got platforms, I suppose, like Instagram helped me out a lot. Yeah. Um then, you know, I went to like a fashion show and then from that it was a men's fashion show, sorry. And then I from there I spun off on like obviously getting men's products and then that's kind of spun me off to do this this journey. Um, but it was like five years ago, so um, it was quite a long time ago. And then I've just worked hard and then just gained where I am today. Um, yeah, and, 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 and then I think along the way you meet so many people like creativity wise mm -hmm. uh, in your life. And especially when I, then I was like in, I was kind of in that scene of like Instagram and influencing and I just kind of like got so creative and then I got signed with Neutrogena. And then it was just like so many things happening. I was like, right, okay, gotta slow it down. Let's see what's happening here. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, because like sometimes, you know, I just want to think I'm very creative, like I said, and like yeah. you, you, know, you, yeah, my head never stops. Um, and that's why I was like, and obviously the podcast show come out, and then it's like this new um, Instagram series has come out and then i'm thinking about the next thing already and i've literally just started the celebrity skin talk like uh it was the 7th of september was my first one so i've only done it for like five six weeks or so <laughs> uh but i'm already thinking about the next thing for next year so it's it's mad it's um so there's so many great things i was trying to say like you know you meet amazing people like you guys like you now um you know you just connect and then you meet and that's kind of like makes you like when you meet creativity people that like you just want to do more you know i think of, okay they inspire you they inspire yeah. you to do more exactly yeah and you know everyone's you know i've i it's just so many things i've got i've done like events and i've done like film festivals and you meet in all these filmmakers and oh it's just like i wish i could make a film <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I can't make a film i'm not that good but you know, it's just the loads of things that, you know, you just kind of think and then, you, you know, you just bring, I guess, what you love and what you enjoy and what you kind of know. Um, like for skin, like I've, I've been dealing with my skin since like 12. Um, can, you, can you imagine, uh, I don't know, like a documentary on Netflix done by you just talking about makeup? Yeah. <laughs> that would be crazy, you know, the Netflix. Yeah right now is, is is a huge platform and yeah. I, I believe there's no content for skincare for men i don't know yeah it's, it's so many like um skin um like programs you know like uh like botch you know bots right like yeah botch, like but it's more like surgical like, 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 so many of it yeah um but yeah never say never anyway i think it might be something for next year but i know everything's on like behind schedule with all this what I've been going on but um I think you know I'm doing what I'm doing now it's just amazing I think and I think yeah the guests I'm having on there it's just it's just fun <laughs> yeah it uh, is but, it is oh yeah it's good, it's good it's good there's a person saying here let's see please reply me King is saying to reply I don't uh -huh. know what what she's talking about with, or uh -huh. he's talking about hey <laughs> let's say hey anyway <laughs> okay, how do I turn this off? Oh, okay, let's see. No, no, I don't know. I, I, oh. I've never done it before, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, let's see. Let me. Oh, I don't know how to turn this off. Anyway, uh, reply to me. <laughs> like, yeah, that would be my third question. What would be your uh, third question? Yes, my third one, isn't it? Yes. Um, so mine is, well, yeah, yeah, I was gonna, exactly the same thing. Like, you tell me a good and bad experience in your industry. Because um, okay. I don't know much about it. <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can turn this. I don't know how to, oh my God, how, how do I, I know, turn it's this? Like at the bottom of the screen, right? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Anyway, uh, 
anyway, let's leave it there, and then eventually uh, the, it will. I, yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, in the music thing, in the music world, there are a lot of bad stuff, you know, and uh, and the, and there is a lot of good stuff too. I remember that uh, my first um, my first album was called No Drugs to Enjoy Music uh, because people in my country and not only my country, like uh, every most parts of the world, of the day, I was able to take it out. Uh, okay, hey. so so yeah, people all mostly relate drugs with uh, electronic music. You know, it's something that is yeah. people Let's relate that a lot. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that, you know what I mean? Not only in electronic music, like every genre, you know, there's this thing about drugs and, and all of that. But then, that was, I never had this experience, like very close with this uh, drug thing. And then, uh, this was something that happened to me, I, like I was um, in a live show, and I saw how, I'm not going to say who, you know, because that's, that's very bad, but I, I, I saw this DJ like ending the concert and then the manager giving him something you know for drugs you know and i was yeah. like oh my god no i never i never seen that personally like i was in shock like a, are you really i mean for other people maybe common but for me i was i mean younger that was like 10 years ago or something or right. seven years ago but anyway, I never had contact with uh, drugs, seeing drugs and things like that. And I saw that and I said, oh, wow, that's so sad. I mean, you know, that uh, these DJs, they may work for that. I don't know. You start, you start asking yourself a lot of questions, you know. Why is he yeah. doing it? How are they? Why are they doing it? Like, I mean, you start asking a lot of questions to yourself because obviously you can't talk to the person. I mean uh and 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 ask them <laughs> what are they doing because that would be so inappropriate but anyway i was in shock that was like a very bad moment i believe and then anyway another bad moment that happened to me was that i i was robbed in that in that event i had my i, I was coming from another city and the, these events they are in a they're very far from the city and then I had my suitcase, right. and then somebody took my suitcase. Like, where's? And they took my my clothes. They took my camera. They took a lot of things. I said I was very sad, mad, angry. I had a lot of feelings. I said I don't want to keep doing. It. I don't want to keep going to these places, these events. You know? Yeah. It was, yeah. It was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. It, it was bad. It was very bad. But then eventually, you know, is you, you gotta do what you like and what you love. And I love that music, and I love music. So I say, even though you may have these bad things, there are also good things. And then I I stay for the good things. You know, I didn't stay for the bad things, but I stay and I keep doing music for the good things that brings music. Obviously, nothing and nobody's perfect. There are good things and bad things, like in everything, in every aspect of every body's life and uh, and, uh, and gender and environment, whatever. You're always gonna find good things and bad things. Yeah. But you have to let the don't let the bad things take over. You know. Oh yeah. Always, yeah. always the good things are going to be better. And something good. Well, I believe I don't know something good. Oh, well, I was reminded that. I mean, you know, talking in front of the camera is something that nobody, nobody is able to do. You know, I mean, we're lucky because we're able to get on a camera and express our ideas, express our, well, our opinions. But not mm. everybody is like that. You know, not every people are afraid or talking in front of the camera, and this uh, music thing led me to go to TV shows, to go to interviews, to have interviews, to have live interviews in that there is no, oh, they, if you make a mistake, there's no way back. I mean, you have to keep going because there's no, I mean, there's no stop button. Uh, so that, that's a, a good thing because I believe going to a studio, you know, 
going to a studio, seeing the camera, seeing the lights, seeing the people, that, that's inspiring. I mean, that is like, oh, you said, you think, you see this war and you said, this is great. It's, it's awesome. I want to be part of that. So yeah, th I got that experience. I got the experience of being on TV shows, uh, having interviews. That's always good. I love that. You know, I love that. Yeah. It's the life points are jointed though, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but you know, it's good. <laughs> and you feel that nervousness that is, I mean, be before going, you see that everybody, a lot of people are watching you. And then, oh my God, I have to do good because if I, if I made a mistake, everybody's going to laugh or something. So that always happens, you know? Yeah, I know. I know. It's so, it's like, I, I just sometimes wish like they just don't tell you, you know, if it's live or pre-recorded or what. I just don't tell me. Because <laughs> if I know in my head, uh, you know, you think, but you oh, don't, it's, it's you don't head, see yourself you know? after, like, you don't see... I mean, when, when they interview... Oh, yes, interview? yes. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. But, um, oh, jeez. I just bought a non-no whenever time, any time <laughs> like that. But I think now because I'm doing so many lives and, um, you know, even with the podcast show, like, it's just so, like, real. It, it, I, I, I'm, all, like, I'm, I'm starting to get okay and comfortable, you know? It's, I'm not yeah. saying anything bad, so it's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let me go with my, you know, the, the time right now, I mean, I, that's why I love this Instagram because, or this yeah. Instagram takeover that I'm doing, uh, time goes very quickly, you know, and then, <laughs> I mean, you can't believe, well, I mean, we already have so many things to talk about, and we have already 45 minutes, but anyway, let's keep going, See, so we, we, we can finish. Uh, okay. Tell me, my for, fourth question is about bullying. Um, here in the United States, is very common bullying. Mm. You can see it on a TV series. I can see it in, I mean, I work in a, in a middle school, um, yeah. eighth grade, ninth grade, seven, sixth grade. Uh, I'm sorry, six, seven, and eighth grade. I work with those uh, grades. And you can see bullying a lot. I mean, even with... Um, uh, Afro-Americans, and then you have the Latino community, and then you have the white American, you know, that they're very separated. And sometimes they are fighting each other. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, what is your opinion about bullying? Um, have you done anything to fight bullying in your country or something like that? Um, I, I've, I've, I come from a place that for the, the type of bullying I was getting when I was in school, um, for five years, they just, they just didn't know what to do. They might, the teachers did not know what to do at wow. all. You know, they could, you know, they can tackle physical bullying, they can tackle like fights or, you know, stuff like that. But I think because mine was more of a sexuality side, I think back then, you know, I'm talking 1997 mm -hmm. in high school, they didn't know what to do. So, um, uh, you know, so it's a very tough time for him because what could they, they just was clueless. And yeah. then, um, but yeah, but now obviously now I'm older, this is one big part of me that I wanted to get out there. I've, um, I am working with many charities um, for this. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's still a very thing close to my heart, you know, and um, yeah. And I believe I, that, I believe that uh, even though times have changed, we can still mm. see that there's a still bullying, you know? Maybe not, not the way it used to be in the past. Now you have cyberbullying, for example. We didn't yeah. have that in the past, you know? Now you yeah. cannot even, it's not even at school, also on the internet, you know? People yeah. are cyber attack, uh, cyberbullying is crazy. So I believe yeah. the, the, those platforms like, like Facebook, Twitter, even YouTube, they should have, or I believe they have some policies about that, you know, because uh, those are places that you, 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 you have to be uh, comfortable, you know, if you are creating uh, a social profile, then, I mean, you see with a lot of celebrities also, they have, they have to close their accounts because they can't stand with everything that's going on, you know, but that, that, that's just crazy. Yeah, and the thing is, just 
uh, like you can never get away from it. I think that's you know because you you could be getting bullied in school and then you're going home and like people will find you so you know your social media if you're on it and you know it's just it's just like consistent you know and and I think one thing um, for me of I think it was like MSN Messenger if you remember that like back yeah, in the day yeah. that was the only thing um, which I think you can add, I think if I remember you added your own in there like exactly you had to add friend. people. Exactly. Yeah, and public, so um, yeah, and obviously, so I didn't have like Facebook and uh, Instagram, Twitter, all those things like we have yeah. now. So obviously, I do find it hard, and I think that's why you know when I go and do like these talks and stuff like that in these youth centers, I think yeah, because I I've come from a different like decade to these people yeah. today, and um, that's why it's very close to me now because I know it's not stopping, and I know people do suffer from it still, and it, it's not. Like it could be worse than I did because there's all exactly. these other things going on. So exactly, absolutely, yeah. Well, that will be my fourth question. What will be your question number four? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so mine is: Who would your dream collaboration collaboration be like, with another music artist? Wow, I mean, that's a hard one. That's a hard one, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in a, in a, in a, how can I answer? I mean. I will have like ideal, I mean, like a impossible collaboration that I know that I, I maybe, I mean, I know it's don't never say impossible, but it's like, you know, it's very hard. But anyway, you know, uh, yeah. I would love Shakira, you know, you know, Shakira. Yes, love her. <laughs> Come on. I'm yeah. from Barranquilla. Uh, she's from Barranquilla too. She's from oh. Colombia. So I, I was. Kind of uh, grew up with getting to know Shakira and all her process and how yeah. she came from a small town, from a very normal family, you know, and become this huge superstar. So, I mean, that would be... She got it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. It would be more than a dream for me. Yeah. And also, there's this Mexican um, singer. Let me introduce you to her. Let me show you her Instagram. Uh, she's she's uh, the queen of the electro pop, you know? Okay. Uh, maybe you don't know about her, but let me I'm introduce you to... Her name is Faye. Okay, F-E-Y. And uh, in the 90s, she was very famous, okay, in the 90s. And she's released this new uh, song with Paul Oakenfold. Paul Oakenfold yeah. is, a, is a huge DJ. She was a fan of Paul Oakenfold, and for her working with Paul Oakenfold was a dream come true. And she's, she just released this new song with Paul Oakenfold. It's called The Perfect Song. And it's, it's, it's electronic music. And I, I would she, love... Yeah. Get her. <laughs> she's just... Yeah. Like you, it's part of you already, and... Yeah, come on. You can do it. You can do it for sure. <laughs> it would be a dream. It would be more than a dream to be able to wear with... It. Those are superstars, you know? Those are huge superstars. In, in Not only in uh, Latin America or America, but in the, the world. I mean, Shakira. Who doesn't know Shakira, you know? Yeah, I saw, yeah, yeah. I love Shakira. <laughs> I, love, uh, I, remember her first, I remember buying a single, actually. Her first ever single. I remember buying that. Which one? Where is it? Whenever, wherever, whenever it was that one. Oh, whenever, yeah, whenever, yeah. whatever. We meant one, to yeah. be together. <laughs> <laughs> I remember buying it, and it, I think it was like a red cover I had. I yeah, was yeah. That was her her crossover, uh, her first album doing a crossover because she was used to uh, speaking singing in Spanish, you know. And it, yeah, it, it's. It's also, I mean, very uh, satisfying for her to also have success songs in English, you know, because she comes from Spanish world, you know? Yeah. And being able to write a song in English, sing it in English, make it a huge success, that's, that's, that's an achievement that, I mean... Oh, yeah. You have to respect that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, I have question number five, and I have some bonus questions. So let me go ahead very quickly. One of the people, question very related. How do you see yourself in five or ten years in the future? 
uh, I don't know, hopefully, you know, I'm just do, do, doing what I'm doing, doing what, I'm lo what I love to do. Um, maybe a Netflix series, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I just hopefully I still have the, the creativity that comes to my head in five to ten years' time. And just to keep making just some new series, new, um, yeah, just new content all the time. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, 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 it is, it's good to have a job, like a modern job, and it's lovely. But then it's like, I just love being creative and putting my name to stuff. And, you know, sure. with these two shows I have, with the podcast show, you know, it's been going for three years. And um, and the celebrity skin talk now, like, the media is just, like, all over it. It's crazy. <laughs> like, it, 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 but it's, like, my name and, like, something I created. And that's, I just want to, I just hope, anyway, that it keeps going in that time sure <laughs> then i'm gonna finish with my bonus questions and then you can go ahead and ask me the last questions that you have another okay. is yeah talking about about the podcast like how how did you say okay i'm good for this i'm gonna do it i'm go i i, I like hosting <laughs> a show i like having a podcast how do you um, i'm good i'm good at it i'm gonna do it how, how that what was that process so, well, well, it, it came to my head after I released the book, and I had such a, a such a good response, and then I had started to get a following, and then I love celebrities as well, so I was thinking, let's bring an LGBT thing and a celebrity thing together and make a podcast show. Um, I hated it at the start, honestly. Like I hated listen listening to myself back. I hated all of that. I like, oh. uh, <laughs> and then, um, but like you know, I like I think. Um, I had a good start to it as well. I think, you know, I had no content. I was like one of my first 10 episodes and I, um, I, I had like Daniel Franzese. I had like so many incredible people already agreeing to come on, not knowing what it's going to be really, because there's no, um, nothing out there. But I, I, and, and, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's just, it's just crazy. It was good though. It was, it was really, really good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Now, talking, you're an LGBTQ plus activist. Now, what have you done as an activist for the community? Oh, God, so many things. So, um, in my local, my local town, I'm always a supporter of the Pride. And then um, we have a film fest, which is actually now. It ha happens this week, which I support 100%. It's an LGBT film festival in Cardiff, which is my hometown. Okay. Um, and I'm always there supporting, but this year we did it all on um, on online. Um, and then yes, a pride as well. And then I did that. And then I and then I work with many charities. I mean, I just did this like a cook along a couple of weeks ago, and I, all my donations who come along went to an LGBT foundation. So yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then, what will be your dream goal? Um, I just think just keep doing what I'm doing, you know, and still just having fun and what I'm doing, I think. I think I just, I, I, I just love having fun. I love talking. I love meeting new people. I love making a relationship. And if I have, in my, my careers, you know, and I just, if I have that, it's just amazing. Because I'm still talking to people I had on my podcast show back in 2017. Um, which is, which is quite nice to say. Because some people okay. think, you know, this is another interview, or like, for them, anyway, thinking, oh, let's get over it, you know, and then, you know, we've been in contact over the years, which is, which is, which is nice, I think. I think it's quite nice, and I like that. Okay. <laughs> so, Scott, I'm finishing my questions. Like, what will be your last questions for me? Oh, yeah, and so then... what is your plans now for your future? <laughs> yeah, what? I mean... But, yeah. I, I think I finished, like, a... Uh, a period of my life with 2020 has been crazy you know 2020 has been yeah. a crazy year for all of us and i think <laughs> yeah with uh, 2020 i'm closing a chapter in my life and i'm starting a new one like uh, i believe uh, uh, i'm going my goal right now is to make new songs i'm going to make as much producer as much songs as i can and I'm, I'm working on it right now i have like two or three songs that I'm still working right now. And, and I'm planning on having 10 songs prepared, you know, in order to release like an album 
I know that albums are not uh, very common right now. People don't release albums. People release singles. But what my, my strategy has been this. I finish a song, I release the radio version as a single, and then I release another radio version as a single. I release like three, four, or five singles as radio versions. And then right. I release a, an album with 10 songs and the extended versions of those radio uh, singles, and then find new songs, okay? I always do that. Like uh, I did that with my uh, album that I released last year. It was, it was I was like uh, having uh, 10 years of my career, and I, have, I was, uh, you know, celebrating 10 years with 10 songs. So that was, that oh. was the name of my song. The album was 1010, because it was 10 years with 10 songs. Five of them were new. I wear standard versions. So I, I plan on keep on doing that. I mean, I know it, it works because you're yeah. releasing music, but then you're releasing new version of the music that people already heard. And then you bring the new songs. So it's kind of like, uh, it's my strategy. I'm, I'm planning on doing that. And for example, right now, I have two songs that I, I, look, I listen to them and say, oh, wow. I have one song that is like a, like a anthem the melody is so good. It's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, Gigi D'Agostino, maybe, or Dimitri Vegas. They, is, they sound like Dimitri Vegas. And uh, it's, it's, it's an anthem. It's an anthem. Like, I listen to it like, oh, man, I got a good song here. So I had to work on this hard in order to, you know, because having an idea how it's, it's like 30%. Then you have to keep building, working, 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 working on until you make it perfect. Well, as perfect as you can. No, nothing's perfect. Nobody's perfect but me. And then this other song is, have you heard uh, uh, What is Love? What is Love from Hardaway? What is Love? Baby, don't hurt me. Oh, yeah. Don't hurt me. No more. So I have a song that is kind of similar to What is Love. And I'm planning on having this. Spanish version, Spanish and English version of it. So let's okay. see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. That would be good. And I love the album, like 1010. I love albums. Like it's, it's got like, those titles. It's just, yeah. It's very, it's, I mean, it's very numerology. Like, you know, when I look, when I look at it right now, okay, what was going on? 1010, now 2020. Now that was crazy. Like, I mean, numerology, <laughs> like. Yeah, it's mad. <laughs> yeah what Good. i was gonna tell you i was gonna tell you something i forgot anyway <laughs> do you have any other question for me <laughs> no that, i think that's the that's the i saw mine that was my five. Oh, okay five well and, uh, i believe uh scott like let me put the okay here's the animation here okay so oh, i okay. think uh yeah <laughs> so this is the the promo that we have for this instagram cover so thank you very much for being in the car station the live is going to be recorded and then eventually i will put it on my youtube channel so people can if they miss it they can re-watch it and then go ahead and maybe with subtitles in YouTube, you can have subtitles, so maybe we can have the <laughs> subtitles in English, and maybe people can, yeah, translate it to their languages. So that that's one tool that YouTube has that Instagram doesn't have, which are the <laughs> subtitles. But anyway, thank you for being in the Car Station TV. Thank you for being in the Instagram Takeover. Is there thank any you. more that you want to say before we go? I just want to say thank you for letting me come on. On a Saturday night is what I was Saturday night for me, but yeah. Thank you for uh, yeah taking your time out. It's so much fun talking though to you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean this is this Instagram takeover is very special. Is my first. Uh, I, I remember what I was gonna tell you, but I'm gonna tell you now. Oh, it's yeah. my is my is my uh, first Instagram takeover in English. Uh, it's my first Instagram takeover with a UK celebrity or person, or, and and that's that's something good. And I wanted to tell you about UK because. Believe it or not, and I also wanted to show you, let me turn on my computer here, that I'm very, I'm very uh, thankful with the UK community for many reasons. Let me show you why. Let me show you okay. here. Uh, okay, so maybe, okay, so here's my, let me close this. Okay, 
Oh, here's my, okay. So this is my, uh, this is a website that is from UK. It's a, it's a company that is called Amadia Music. Amadia Music uh, is, is the company that releases my music. So I've been working with Amadia for more than five years. This is their website, okay? And you can see uh, they are located in UK, okay? And uh, they're Hello. located in UK. And then, I mean, I, I had a very great, a very great uh, experience. You see, here it says, Amadia Music is a UK registered company, okay? So, yeah, I'm very <laughs> thankful with Amadia because they have, I mean, most of my music uh, is released with this UK company. And sometimes finding a partner is very hard, you know? It's yeah. very difficult. And yeah. once you find that uh, kind of company that helps you, it will be, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to work with people like them. The other thing that I'm so grateful is this is my Spotify artist for artists. And look at this. United UK. Kingdom. So <laughs> it's the, the second country that listens to my music. First is United States and then is United Kingdom. I have like how many? Oops, wait. I have, <laughs> well, let me put this right here. Okay, I have 25,000 people listening in uk so i'm very thankful with the, the uk community uk for supporting and listening to my music also united states but i mean coming from uh, coming from oh let me okay let me maybe didn't people didn't see okay let me turn this oh maybe you can see it but oh this way is, it's way better so yeah so i was showing you amadea music okay so amadea this is yeah. the, the the website amadea music.com people can uh submit their music uh, through then, it's a UK company, and I've been having a great experience with Amadea. This is their website, okay? This is the, they say it's a, it's a UK registered company. It's great. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, United Kingdom. I mean, I'm very thankful with the UK people because they are the second country who listens to my music first, United States, UK, France, Germany, Canada. So very, a, a lot of... Uh, and London, you see, London is the yeah. third country and the first city <laughs> that listens to me. I mean, 6,000 listeners on, on London. Like, a, I'm very thankful with the London people for listening to my music. It's an honor, honestly, to have uh, uh, listeners in, in UK. So very thankful for that. And uh, talking to a person uh, like you that you live in in UK, so it's also a pleasure for me uh, well, to have you in you. this Instagram takeover. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. The, also, the other thing is that I, I was going to tell you is that I, I'm uh, preparing songs, as I told you, and I will be needing singers. So, if any singer from UK. Uh, that sings very well and wants to collaborate, make it a worldwide hit. You can <laughs> test me, send me a message. We can work through distance. We don't necessarily have to meet personally. We can work uh, virtually. You know, I can send people uh, everything, uh, songs and lyrics and then coaching, how to, how to make this song. So it will be an honor to work with UK singers because I know UK is, is very, you can think they have a lot of talent and I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. And the English <laughs> is very special. So having that accent on my music would be awesome. Okay? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Nice British for you. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's all. Okay. Thank you for being on the Car Station TV. Thank and you. we'll see you later. Yes. Take care. See you soon. Bye, Thank bye, you, bye. Scott. Thank you for being in the car station to be. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.